Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Metalloid Firearms and Sports, utilizing botanical technologies to develop an advanced high-performance line of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products that will not only clean and protect your firearms, but also your leather and wood components. Find out more at metalloidfirearmsproducts.com. And by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We've got a jam-packed show. We're going to do a little perch fishing over here in West Michigan where we just about got blown off the water. We're also going to show you a Michigan manufacturer that's building some really cool holsters. And we're going to kick off this week's show by doing a little trapping. We're going to follow a couple of guys on their trap line. And if we have some time, we're going to have a bragging board as well. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan We all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse Offering a variety of meat products Country Smokehouse is located 3 miles south of I-69 On M53 just south of Imlay City Country Smokehouse is a meat processor A butcher and a destination for sportsmen by KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information on other products, kloutdoor.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping supplies, offering hunting apparel and accessories as well as hunting and fishing licenses. Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and we kick off this week's show with the opening day of trapping season here in Michigan, where I was able to tag along with a couple of guys checking their trap line for the very first time this year here in Zone 3. The plan today was to start on the lake and eventually end up on a few smaller streams looking for a mixed bag of coon, muskrat, and beaver. And it didn't take long at all for us to get on the board. This is our first muskrat of the season right here. And the set I had is I put it right where he's climbing up on the house. And it's where they're always going to be working to get up on top. So, and it produced a pretty good sized rat for us. First one. So what we did here is we got a rat house sitting right here. And you can see where they've kind of been coming up on the back side there to kind of add stuff on the top, just kind of build their build the house up. And they were kind of sitting in here as a feed bed. So we put a corn cob up in there. It's got a lot of attraction. There's a lot of the white of it shows a lot, the yellow. And even though these rats probably never seen a corn cob before, it's something different. It's something that they can, they'll pique their interest in, so they'll move up and check it out. And as you can see, we got two rats here, a double, and we'll keep moving on. These guys use a variety of different traps and techniques when it comes to muskrats. And when they're not trapping near the hut, they usually key in on the feeding areas. What we got here is number one jump. This is a absolute superb 
a muskrat trap. What we like to use them for is I like using them on these feed mounds, like what I'm going to show you here in a second. I uh, they're called a jump because you, because you can kind of see how it's a concave and there's a spring underneath of it. What happens is when this is set and the, the muskrat or animal steps on the pan, it, it'll it jump up onto the animal's leg. It jumps up farther on the leg in the theory of trying to hold, get a better catch, a better secure on the animal so that way it can't get away. Basically what that is is a uh, uh, feed mat. And what it is is rats will be swimming through the weeds. They'll find something they want to eat, like a root or something. They'll come up, they'll sit right on top of that, and as you can see down in here, there's actually little cattail root pieces and grass pieces. And what they'll do is they'll sit there, they'll eat. They're kind of out of the way. They're not in the open, so hawks and stuff can't get to them. So that's a great place to put a trap. Put it right on the top, put it, stake it down. Don't have to bait it, don't have to do anything, and you're done. And those are really productive, especially if you can find a lot of them. After doing pretty well on muskrats, it was time to check our last trap on the lake, where the guys hoped they would find their very first beaver of the season. So what we got here is a beaver lodge, and what they're, this is on a big lake here, and what they did is they built a, a big feed pile out here in front of the lodge, and they've been kind of going up along the side, just like the muskrats we showed you earlier, trying to build that pile, or the, build the lodge up as much as possible. We put a foothold up there on the side, and. We've got a beaver underneath my feet right now, so we're gonna go ahead and get him out and get this reset, and we'll show you a little bit better of a picture of that. When we pulled him out of the water, all this hair was slicked right back like that, and I shook him off, and it all pops up like that. And it's also got a lot to do with the oils that are they put on their body. If you can see it, that split toenail right there, that's almost like a comb for them. And they've got two cast, they got two glands in here. They got castor glands and they got oil glands. They'll take those oil glands put it on that comb and run it through their hair and it almost acts as a waterproofing agent. So, there he is. Although this wasn't the size beaver they were hoping for, that didn't seem to matter much, which speaks to what trapping really is at its core, conservation. One of the big things about trapping that a lot of people don't really hear about or necessarily think about is the conservation aspect of it. Yeah, you can catch, you can catch fur and sell them for money, but the biggest thing, the whole goal that I've ever done it for. I've never done it for the money. It's always been for the fact that I'm trying to help the population of these animals. Uh, we're trying to help decrease the population to a sustainable number so that way our resources that they're living in aren't depleted. Uh, raccoons are pretty much scavengers as is, but they'll get to the point where they'll start eating uh, pheasants eggs, uh, uh, turkey eggs, all that. In, if we didn't control the raccoon populations, you can better believe it in certain areas, you're gonna see a decrease in turkeys and pheasants. Uh, those are two primary big ones, especially skunks are also another big one for that. Uh, muskrats, you'll see damage along uh, streams and creeks. They'll, they'll burrow right up inside and they'll start eroding away the banks. Uh, that's just another reason why we, should, why we need to do this, why this has to be the way it is. So what we got here has been, it's a creek goes right up towards the road. You got thick woods in the back. There's cornfields on both sides of this woods. Uh, what we did is I've got, there's a lot of coons that move along here at night looking for crayfish, frogs, minnows, stuff like that to eat. I put a pocket set in over there. He's got it all messed up right now, but we're gonna remake that. As you can see, you got a nice boar coon again. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it. They come down here, acts as a natural funnel. They move through here looking for food and just happened to be where he was at tonight. All right, well, I got a nice size coon right here. Right here next to the culvert, I got a pocket. And I have another little pocket set right there just to hole up in the bank. And the soft bottom, he managed to pull one of the traps up and well, I got both front feet then. So I'll end up resetting both these and stake it a little bit better and see if we can get another one tomorrow. After a successful set of coon traps, we headed to a nearby ditch in search of a few more muskrats to round out the day. Trapping muskrats on this kind of water is how James cut his teeth in the world of trapping over 15 years ago. 
15 years ago, I was sitting down reading a magazine. I think it was for Fishing Game. It was one of the older magazines that I remember reading, but I'd seen a trapping article about it, and I asked my dad, and I said, can you, have you done this before? Can you show me? Because I've seen some traps hanging out in this shed before. And he said, yeah, I'll take you out. And we went out and he showed me kind of some, a few things that what he had learned. And uh, it just basically sprouted from there. I've been doing it ever since. I've uh, learned how to do beaver trapping and otter trapping. And I've moved up farther as far as different species of trap. Uh, when I first started, I was trapping with muskrats and maybe a mink if I was lucky, more of an accidental, but now I actually target for them. And just been doing stuff like that. and. Just loving it. We've had, there's three zones in Michigan. You've got the north zone, middle zone, and the south zone. Uh, each one of those zones has their own opener for trapping. Ours just started, which are in the south zone right now, just started on the 10th, which was technically yesterday. We went out and put all of our sets in. And today was technically the first check. So, I mean, it's just like any kind of opening day for anything, deer hunting, turkey hunting. If any guys are really big into it, you, your heart's racing the whole night. You don't get to sleep very good because you're wondering what's going to come up the next day. You're hoping you have a good check. And it's just, it's that anticipation builds throughout the whole night and pretty much for me the whole year because there's times where I'm out even duck hunting or goose hunting or deer hunting and I see a spot and I'm like, that'd be a really good coon spot or that'd be a really good spot for trapping rats. Um, stuff like that. So I'm constantly thinking about it and it just builds up the anticipation all year and especially the night before is just, that's usually the worst, the worst night is waiting for that first check the next day. We ended the day with a mixed bag, caught with all different kinds of traps. And although fur prices are significantly down this year, trapping still has a place in the outdoors, as it plays a vital role in conservation and helping to carry on the outdoor legacy here in Michigan. Special thanks to James and Harley for letting me tag along on a day of checking traps here in the southern part of the state. Well, I always say that some of our best sportsmen here in the state of Michigan are our trappers. We as gun hunters have to get our deer within maybe 100 yards, 200 yards. As a bow hunter, you're trying to get within maybe 20 or 30 yards. But those trappers, well, they have to have those animals step in a 2 inch by 2 inch square. Thanks to James Kennedy for letting us tag along. What we're going to do now is stop in at a Michigan manufacturer actually that started in his garage making a very unique holster system. Every once in a while you hear about a startup business that literally starts in the garage and becomes a big success. Well, just north of Muskegon, Jerry Bennett looks to be doing just that. Jerry makes all sorts of holsters, but his are just a little bit different than most. The gist of it is, is that I bought a handgun and then I bought another handgun and I needed a holster that would work. It would be uh, interchangeable. I mean, yeah, I have a bunch of tools around, but I don't want to have to carry them with me. So we came up with a process where you can literally just snap the, the one gun off and snap the other one on and keep your same leather and the comfort's already built into it. So that, that's really how it started. And then a couple buddies of mine saw it, decided they liked it, and here we are. So before we show you how he makes these, let's take a look at just how versatile these carry holsters truly are. Uh, this is a Glock 43. Okay, so it snaps in there and you're good to go. So you got, you see you can get your, your shooter's grip on it there and uh, at this point, if it were your personal one, it would be partially broken in and you'd have these adjusted for your ride height and your cant. And then say you want to carry your 1911, you pull the gun out, pull it out of your pants, snap it off, grab the new one, snap it on. Yes, they snap somewhat difficult, but that's okay. We want them to be. Okay, so now everything's in place. It's sitting at the same height and uh, can't that your original gun was, so your draw is gonna be the same. And then we'll grab the 1911, which this one is built for, and we'll slide that in. So now you can just carry 1911. Perfect. And you're all set. Jerry is very hands-on with this process, and really having his buddies try these gave him the idea that this may be worth doing as a business. In all honesty, it was a comfort and versatility of the way the, the system works. Um, they're just like me, you know. They have more than one gun. In fact, they have probably more than five handguns, most of them. And uh, I mean, we're talking full-size 1911s that carry comfortably and whatnot. So that's what it was. It was a comfort level and the fact that they didn't have to go spend uh, double the money on holsters. They could just buy that, that additional piece, snap it on, and they're ready to go. Once the leather is done, Jerry has quite the process to handle the Tyvex. 
After the oven, it's time to be fitted to a specific gun. So we go ahead and turn that off. And this is just a matter of lining it up here. Let me close our top, hold it down. It's gonna get a little louder. Come all the way up, and we suck it down. Top of our clamp comes down, so we get pressure on the trigger guard where we want it. And it just sits there, and I just kind of work the, the corners a little bit to make sure it gets all the way down to where we want it. This is the, this part probably isn't necessary, but I'm just standing here anyway, so. Now, once the Tyvex cools, it becomes very rigid again and works perfect for what Jerry needs it to do. And that's it. That is now custom fit to the Glock 43 with all the the snaps in the right place. You see how I kind of got the, the up mm. stickers on them here? It's the shape of it. It's already hardened. There's your 80,000s. I mean, it, it's got good definition. You can see what you need to see there. I have to say I am always amazed at the ingenuity of some of our sportsmen. Whether it's a bamboo fly rod, custom lures, or interchangeable gun holsters, we have some very resourceful sportsmen and women here in Michigan. From the backside here, we don't put a backer on it because we've had uh, reports of the backer causing a, a rubbing effect against the skin. Mm. So once this leather breaks in a little bit, it feels more like a felt feel on the back, so it's actually comfortable against the skin. And as you see, all of our screws are... Um, lower than the, what they call a T-nut here that holds it together so you won't have that poking against your body. So we've had great results with something just simple like this and then as it breaks in it forms to your body and it becomes actually a little bit more comfortable on the backside. Now Jerry does make a variety of more traditional holsters but his interchangeable system is great for the gun owner who doesn't want to buy a bunch of holsters. It uh, rides just like a normal uh, hybrid holster in the waistband. Um, you know, and what you see once it's in there, it's secure, nothing's going to pop. You get a nice snug fit, you can hear it click in there. Um, the uh, clips are not adorned as to not draw attention to it. Mm. It's meant to be as subtle as possible here. Um, but yeah, just like that, it's, if you wanted to pull it out and carry your 1911 instead of your shield, you would just pull the, the holster back out, snap on the other version, and your 1911 will ride just like that shield would right there, where you can get your hand down in there just like you want to want to get a hold of it there. Just got to go in between, which is normal. I mean, you've got a body there, right. so can't do much about that. And then these, these are tuckable, so you can go. Not the easiest to tuck, but it's the way they're designed. You can go over the gun and under the clip, and then you poof it back out like guys do, right? If you have a concealed carry permit, this interchangeable system may be worth looking at. We'll have Jerry's website in the credits. Responsible, safe gun handling is always something we want to promote. And here in a garage in West Michigan, Jerry Bennett is helping us do just that. fish walleyes we're gonna jig them um, out in some deeper water right now walleyes are out there feeding putting their fall feed on right now for the winter um, we've been doing some fish here it's nothing hot uh, I was out Sunday we got four Sunday a couple undersized I didn't fish them that long uh, perch fishing we've been fishing perch there quite a bit a lot of perch starting to roll in the White Lake right now it's that time of the year for the perch to come in before ice up so nice. that's starting to happen pretty good All right. um, hopefully we'll get on them today there we go just a couple of days ago, my son Charlie and I met up with Mitch Johnson and his buddy Greg to do a little last minute walleye slash perch fishing not too far from home on White Lake in the Montague Whitehall area. Now, the middle of the lake was too hard to fish, so we moved shallower in search of some perch. We are going to try fishing some perch. I got some uh, White River Tackle uh, perch yeah. pounders here. Yeah. They've been working real well. Um, we used them out of Grand Haven yesterday. It's one of my go-to perch baits. 
These perch pounders were pretty awesome. With a fish scale residue as part of the hook, we then tipped it with two spikes, and that was it. A sinker to take us to the bottom, and then just keep light tension on it to feel the bite, and we were into the fish as fast as we could go. Lots of sorting, but also lots of fun. Well, there was no shortage of hungry fish on this trip. We probably kept about a dozen or so. We fished until we were too cold and then we called it. But about a quarter mile from the launch is Mitch's shop called Johnson's Great Outdoors. He has a new location here in Montague and I couldn't wait to see it. Well, we started out as Johnson's Great Outdoors in Muskegon and we've been in Muskegon I think since 1982. We started there and then we bought spring sporting goods and we were there till 2000 I think it was. And then 1999, I started Johnson's Great Outdoors just up the road here. And I moved down the street here. And then I built this place. Um, in March, we moved back here. So we've done some growing in the last few years. Well, we carry a little bit of everything. We do a lot with archery. I carry all the major crossbows and all the major compound bows. And I do a lot of fishing, everything for fishing stuff. I build custom rods. Um, Anything for big lake fishing. I'm a walleye fisherman, so I call, I'm kind of a walleye snob, so I kind of, I mean, Frank's Great Outdoors is a good example. It has great walleye fishing products. I'm trying to mimic that on this side of the state because there's nowhere to go get it at. So I try to carry that stuff. We carry a great selection. I like perch rigs. Those perch rigs I talked to this morning that we had right there were uh, perch pounders, they're called from White River Tackle. Um, they work great, as you can see. Um, but anything else, little niches that we carry, and if there's something that we're missing that people like us to carry, I'm always open to suggestion. If you're looking for a spot in West Michigan that has everything you need for fishing and hunting, well, this may be the place to check out. And if by some chance Mitch isn't there, well, just wander down to the lake. There's a good bet he's wetting a line not too far away, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe one of the last couple of weeks with the holidays, maybe you missed one of the episodes or some of our opening day stuff, you can always check us out online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. And we're on the Facebook thing. If you do that, kind of letting you know where we're at around the state of Michigan. We're going to have lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks, some good hunting, some good fishing, a little muzzle loading, lots of stuff happening right now in the state of Michigan. Get out there and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars on all Michigan game fish. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. By Jay Sporting Goods with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's, serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiast since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays on the web at jayssportinggoods.com. By the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Closed captioning is provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. George. Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, Saint.